I am Gen Z, and my generation might be the last one who dies of aging. Death. I'm sure many of you grimaced when you heard the words because we don't speak about dying. Remember Barbie movie from last summer, where at the beginning there's epic dance scene where just everybody dances the night away until Barbie says, do you guys ever think about death? And at this point, everything stops. Even Ken stops speaking of Barbie at this point because death is so much of a taboo topic. But when we do allow the death thoughts to creep into our minds, we tend to romanticize this moment. I want to die of old age, in my bed, with my family members beside me, hopefully in my sleep, so that I can just start a dream and then never wake up. But I need to reality check you at this point. Dying of old age, dying of aging, doesn't look like this. It hurts. And it hurts a lot. Because biologically speaking, aging is the constant destruction of your organism. Your body gets so worn out that it just can't sustain you anymore. This is what aging and dying of aging feels like. I need you to remember the last time you were hangover. And this TED talk is happening at the college, so I know this is not so much of a distant memory for most of us. I need you to stay with the hangover, the music still thrumming in your ears, the lights in your eyes, your head wanting to explode, and the only question you keep asking yourself is why? Why did I ever do it to myself? I swear, I will never drink again. Please let this hangover stop. Please let it stop now. But imagine it doesn't. You keep drinking water, you keep sleeping, but the hangover is still there for a day, for two, how about nine years? Nine years of constant hangover, the muscle soreness, the nausea, the feeling like you don't, can't really do anything. And it just keeps getting worse and worse. Nine years right now is the current global gap between health span and lifespan. Meaning that for most of us, if we don't claim our healthy longevity, our health will end nine years before we die. For nine years, we will keep on dying rather than living. But it's not all that doom and gloom. I, th we don't need that dark mood of here because right now, in 2024, we are closer than ever to actually defeating aging. Since the beginning of humanity, we were looking for the philosopher's stone, all the quests for immortality, raising the longevity temples. Today, we are closer than ever to making this happen. All the most promising solutions to end aging are based on AI. Artificial intelligence helps us discover drugs. Drugs that tar target not only aging, but also diseases at the same time, because these things share a lot of pathways. AI also helps us find a new purpose for many drugs that exist currently. We can even go a step further and think about epigenetic reprogramming. And by this point in the talk, you might have realized that the longevity word is super heavily focused on difficult words. But what epigenetic reprogramming basically means is that we can tell your organs, like a liver or a kidney, to turn on and off specific genes. Meaning like we can tell your kidney like, hey, can you disregard this information on page four of DNA and highlight the one on page 18, just so that your organ can be turned back by years in their fitness and biological age. Meaning that when this treatment actually exits the lab and gets into humans, we can have a 70 or an 80 year old with an organ of a 20 year old without transplantation, just with epigenetic reprogramming. There is also a method that tries to take all this clinically validated and already proven techniques into practice right now, and this is longevity medicine. It's an AI-driven precision approach that helps people take their health span as long as possible, meaning that the aging hangover is minimized to months or almost none. Longevity medicine concerns a human from prenatal stage, so when you were still in your mom's belly, to the very end, and we do that by gathering data. We gather data about what exactly is happening in your body at these specific stages in your 
body and then analyze it to find the right treatment that is uniquely specialized to you. Think about the last time you were at the doctor's office. Most likely there was something wrong with you at that, at that time. You had a cold, you broke your leg. You were seeking sick care. Longevity medicine is centered around healthcare, bringing people from okay, fine, healthy, to optimal or even best performance during their entire lives. What exciting times to be alive. It actually is happening in front of our eyes. But I need you to play gardeners with me for a second. You know, the people who take care of our greenery next to us. You wouldn't really apply a fertilizer to a grass that is already burned. Meaning that we are aging. Tick tack, tick tack. We've already aged by about 10 minutes since the conference started. And the changes in our body, the hangover, is getting closer and closer. But there are things we can do to slow it down that are not expensive, that just require thought and effort. Because 75% of your healthy longevity depends on how you spend your days. Three quarters of how long and how healthily you will live depends on your lifestyle and your environment. I'm going to present you with four methods that are not going to add many years to your life yet, but they are going to add a lot of life back to your years. You can remember them with four S. Social, sweat, savor, and sleep. Let's start with social. The US Surgeon General, Dr. Vivek Murphy, says that loneliness is as deadly as smoking 15 cigarettes a day. And by today, we all know that smoking kills us, but so does loneliness. Look around you. Look to your left, right. There are human beings around you. When was the last time you interacted with a stranger? When was the last time you had a meaningful conversation with a friend? Loneliness is a very subjective feeling. So you have to ask yourself, do I feel like there is enough human contact in my life? And your body will thank you when you feel like you have friends because it will actually fight off diseases better. You slow down aging when you feel like you belong. Social can also stand for how you see old people, because there are a lot of ageist stereotypes right now. Ageism is the discrimination on the basis of age. It works both ways. But when you see old people as those who are not that involved in technology, are a little bit slower, are just not fun to be around, you fail to realize that with each passing second, you are closer to thinking that about yourself, because we are all aging the rate of aging and the end product, we can take partial control over, th over that though. So there is one thing that you can do with friends, regardless of their age. And this thing is exercise. It's absolutely crucial to move your body daily, not necessarily at the gym with a strict workout regimen every single day, even a dancing session or a long walk counts, as long as there is a balance in between these types of activities. Right now, the concept of step count is super popular. And as much as I love walking, and maybe that's a European thing in me, but it's OK. It's perfect to get the 6,000, 10,000 steps a day. But it's also not enough. You have to get your heart rate up, your blood flow faster. You have to activate specific parts of the muscles. Because then, when you grow your muscles, you get more efficient mitochondria. And this is something you might remember from high school. Mitochondria are these tiny things inside your cells that give you more energy. And when your mitochondria are happy, when they work well, you slow down aging. More muscles also stabilize your blood sugar levels, meaning that the more muscles you have, the less impact the donut will have on you. And speaking about the donut, let's move to savor. Savoring what you eat. And I'm not going to tell you to drop that donut right now, because you are all smart people. You know that we should avoid, avoid eating junk food. Because to put this into perspective, junk food equals, first, very unhappy mitochondria. Second, most likely getting fatter and fatter. There are different types of fat in our body. But the white fat, the one that comes mostly from junk food, 
is the major driver of diseases. So is aging. This is all related. But after you've ate, after, well, of course, after you've aged, but after you exercised and thought about other people and paid attention to your diet, you are most likely hungry. So let's move to the fourth of the S's, and that is sleep. Your body has an internal clock that is called the circadian rhythm. And it asks you, it literally begs you on its knees every single day to go to bed and sleep, roughly from 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. What happens if we don't? Because we've all been there. We've all spent nights at the library just, just writing yet another essay or at the party. Because we tend to think that sleep is not as important. And we know that bad things happen the next day if we don't sleep. But one thing specific to longevity, what happens when you don't follow this clock, is that you give your body an invitation to create more zombie cells. And I, this is not a metaphor, this is an actually established concept in geroscience. Zombie cells just hang around in your body. They don't do anything apart from releasing this toxic substance that keeps on biting other cells inside of you, also making them zombie. And then slowly turning you into a zombie. Because remember the moment you were hangover? Were you much different from a zombie back then? This is also what aging slowly and slowly turns you into, biologically, if you don't claim your healthy longevity. Would the world crumble down if you don't follow these four steps? No. We're all humans, and from time to time, we all just go, live only once, YOLO, and break all the rules. But you have to realize one thing. You are in a relationship with your body. And I know it's two weeks after the Valentine's Day, and maybe I should have told you sooner, but in this relationship, the same principles apply. Meaning, if you make your partner clean up a huge mess every single day, or even often, sooner or later, they will get fed up with you and just leave. You have to ask yourself a question. How long do I want to live? How long do I want to live? How do I want to die? Do I allow myself to die in pain? That's why you need to claim your healthy longevity and live accordingly. But if you are still not convinced that with time your body will turn against you as you age, then I need you to close your eyes and bring back a childhood memory. The one with your parents, the one with your grandparents, when you were running around, fooling with them, telling them about a fascinating day at preschool. Picture them, their faces, their bodies. Picture them now. When was the last time you talked with them? Can you still talk with them? See their faces, the wrinkles that start to appear, the salt and pepper hair. As much as we say to embrace these changes as we age, these are the symptoms that the hangover is getting closer. These are the symptoms of aging. And we can delay that. But now, think about yourself. Think about yourself 70 years old. How about 80? How about a 100-year-old yourself? It is possible if you claim your healthy longevity. With your own effort put into your health span, and then the geroscience interventions that are already in the making or starting to be applicable, you can actually live to 100. But make sure that you make the point of living to 100. Because the longer you think you will live, the more you are actually expected to live rather than exist. It's never too late to start your healthy longevity journey, but it's also never too early. Thank you so much for your attention.